Here's how to really make money in 2023 and keep more of it. Oh, I, I like money. Welcome to State of the Market here on our new home, the Oxford Club YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe so you never miss another State of the Market video from me or the videos from my colleagues, Alexander Green and Matthew Carr. It's the new year. How are those resolutions coming along? They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. When you're not really fine, but you just can't. Yeah, every year, it's the same thing. I'm going to start eating healthier, start working out, and this is the year I'm going to finally learn to speak Flemish. Two weeks later, I'm knee-deep in Nutter Butters, binging Better Call Saul in English, not Flemish. Most of us make financial New Year's resolutions too, so stick with me for a minute or two, and I'll show you how to actually keep those resolutions in 2023. Now, when it comes to saving, it's not easy, especially with prices soaring these days. A hundred and one dollars for a Krabby Patty? With cheese, Mr. Squidward. I'm a fan of forced savings, meaning the money is taken out of your paycheck before you receive it, or it's taken right out of your account. Now, if your company has a 401k, use it. Contribute 10% of your paycheck to it. The money will automatically be taken out, and you won't miss it as much as you think you will. Plus, it reduces your taxable income and thus the taxes you owe. So it's not even like it's a full 10%. So think of it this way. If you make $100,000 and contribute 10% of your income to a 401k, your taxable income is now $90,000. If you're single, you're in the 24% tax bracket, married 22%. So let's go with 24% for this example. Because your taxable income was reduced by $10,000, you'll owe $2,400 less in taxes. So your take home is only 7.6% less, not 10%. Plus, many companies match 50 cents on the dollar up to 6% of your salary or 3% in total. So if you contribute $10,000 of a $100,000 salary, your employer is contributing $3,000. If you don't contribute at least $6,000 to your 401k in order to receive the $3,000, that's like your boss walking into your office with an envelope stuffed with $3,000 and you say, no thanks, I'm good. This is my counter. No deal! You're not good. What's good is taking your boss's money. Contribute to a 401k. Now, if you don't have access to a 401k but have an IRA, you may be able to make automatic deposits into your account every month taken directly from your bank account. Find out from your broker that holds your IRA account if you can do that. Most of them do allow you to make regular contributions. So this way the money is saved and you don't even have to think about it automatic savings is a great thing. Now, similar to a 401k, if you have a high deductible health insurance policy, you're eligible for a health savings account or HSA. If your employer offers one, an HSA is similar to a 401k, but it's for healthcare expenses. If your employer does not offer one, then it's similar to an IRA. You have health care expenses anyway. If not today, you will tomorrow. We made like 100 million doctor's appointments for ourselves in one week. After this, we won't have to go to the doctor for like 10 years because we're smart. You may as well put some money aside pre-tax for it. Like a 401k, it lowers your taxable income. So if you put $5,000 a year into an HSA and you're in the 24% tax bracket, you'll save $1,200 a year in taxes. So now it'll only cost you $3,800 for $5,000 worth of health care. And you will have health care expenses. If not now, then down the road. Everyone does. Oh, you're also responsible for this hefty hospital bill. Look, a bear! Run! Uh, uh, and here's the best part. If you don't need the money now, you can invest it and use it whenever you need it for health care expenses. You can even save and invest for years, letting that money grow and tapping the money whenever you want, as long as it's for health care, which, again, we will all need as we get older. Why, God, why? Let the others grow old, not me. Now, lastly, nearly everyone I know says they need to invest more, but it's scary. The market is volatile, and whenever you're thinking about investing, the market is too hot or too cold. It is never just right. What's the matter? Too hot, Mr. Wonka? Too cold. So here's what I do. Regardless of what the market is doing, I invest on my birthday, on my wife's birthday, and on my kids' birthdays. And they're spread out around the year, so money is invested at different times. And whether the market is at all-time highs or tanking, I make those investments no matter what. 
I think of it as a birthday present for my family because I know that over the long term, the market goes up and the money I invested will be worth a lot more down the road, which means you can afford an incredible birthday present for your wife in a few years. Now, you can always pick different dates if birthdays don't work, but come up with a few dates throughout the year. Write it on your calendar where you know that you will invest on those dates and tell your significant other or a friend to ask you about it so you're accountable. But set it in your mind like a birthday present that this is non-negotiable. You wouldn't tell your wife, I'm not getting you a birthday present right now because the market for birthday presents is too strong or it's too weak. So I hope your 2023 is off to a fabulous start and these tips help to make it a financially healthier and wealthier year for you. For more wealth and income building ideas, be sure to check out my free e-letter, Wealthy Retirement. Just click on the link in the description. I'm Mark Lichtenfeld. Thanks for watching State of the Market. I'll see you soon.